Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Audacious Church. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another Audacious Devotion. My name is Olu, I'm part of the North location, and it is my pleasure and privilege to be bringing to you the devotion uh, today. I would love to share a personal experience of mine with you, which I hope will bless you and encourage you and let you know that God is with you in everything you do and everything you are going through. Many years ago, I was unable to, or found myself in a situation where I was unable to go to school for about four and a half, five weeks. Now, this wasn't because of any kind of health condition or any physical impediment whatsoever. It was simply transactional. My parents were in England, I was in Nigeria, um, and for whatever reason, funds weren't going through, there were complications, and the school just said, you couldn't attend until all those things were resolved. Um, legitimate reasons for them, but little old me was stuck with four and a half weeks of being at home, unable to attend school when all my friends were already in school. To, to, to complicate matters slightly further, I had to stay with an uncle, um, as obviously we didn't have a house over there. And my uncle's house was, well, it was a flat and it was a small flat. I could probably run to and fro in about two seconds. Um, slight exaggeration, but you get the feeling. He didn't have much in his house either. Um, he didn't have um, any games consoles or games of any sorts because he didn't have kids. There were no mobile phones in those days, so no that to play with. He didn't have a TV. Um, furthermore, he said really don't go outside a because i was like 13 14 at the time and b he said you with an english accent walking around somebody will probably kidnap you and i don't need that on my head so just don't go anywhere um so there i was um at this young age um uh, just waiting for a phone call praying day in and out that god will do something and bring a change I do remember one particular day though that stands out to me um, and as I say is really prominent in my mind till today like it happened yesterday. I stared for a little while at a wall and on that wall there was a plaque with a scripture, a plaque with a scripture, John chapter 8 verse 12 and I'll read it for you. It wasn't the whole scripture in it but I'll read the whole scripture and it says then spake Jesus unto, so then spake Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I do remember staring at the scripture so vividly um, for about 30 seconds. And God just spoke to me and said, read it backwards. So I did. This is what it sounds like. Life of light, the hash, sorry, life of light, the have shall, but darkness in walk, not shall me followeth that he. He brought a smile to my face pretty quickly for two reasons. A, it sounded like someone trying to speak English with a really important message, but couldn't quite speak the English, but still conveyed the message. And B, it was just amazing that you could read backwards and it still kind of had the same meaning. But you know, more than all of this, something else happened. That in that moment, as I chuckled, the peace of God filled the room and I just had the sense that God was there. He was watching, he was listening and he was seeing. Moreover, I felt like God intended for me to laugh at that particular moment. Like he knew what I would find funny, humorous. I just wanted to reassure me that he was there with me at this particular moment in time. Another scripture that I love reading is John chapter 11, verse 35, Jesus wept. What blows my mind about this scripture is that Jesus was on his way to heal Lazarus, not sorry, not to heal Lazarus, but to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew he had the power in his hands, but when he got to the, the tomb side and saw all the people mourning and crying, he then himself wept. I just wanna say this, that whatever we're going through, he's not so high and mighty not so powerful and lofty that he cannot feel our pain and our emotions. Imagine Jesus with the power to raise Lazarus from the dead. He still came, saw people weeping and wept with them. 
I wouldn't put it past the situation and circumstance for Jesus to say those really powerful words, Lazarus come forth still with a tear in his eyes, not because Lazarus won't come forth, but because his people are crying and his people are in pain. His providence does not stop him feeling what we feel. And whatever it is you're going through today, I want to let you know, God feels, he knows, he has the power to bring you through, but that doesn't stop him from feeling the pain with you. And he will bring you through. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you because you are a great God. You made us, you know us, inside and out. I want to reassure everyone listening now, Father, Lord, I'll, may you reassure everyone that's listening right now that, Lord, you are with them, that you are able, and that you can do more than we could ever ask or think, Father, Lord. I pray that they will find your providence, reassure them, and let them know, Father, that you will bring them through. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.